Long Island Morning Edition is part of Your Election 2024, a special collection of programs, series, and resources from the WNET Group to illuminate election issues on air, online, and on YouTube leading into the November 5th elections. Learn more at WLIW.org slash Your Election 2024. Good morning. This is Long Island Morning Edition on 88.3 WLIW-FM. I'm Michael Mackey. New York Governor Kathy Hochul today is expected to announce a modified congestion pricing plan for Manhattan that will start the toll at $9 in a bid to get the process rolling before President-elect Donald Trump takes office. Hochul earlier this year had put on hold a planned toll hike that would have charged drivers $15 for entering the busiest parts of Manhattan, saying the fee was too high. She's been promising a new plan by year's end and has been reaching out to lawmakers to suss out support for making it $9 with gradual increases. Yancey Roy reports in Newsday that the plan also might include a bump in certain payroll taxes in some jurisdictions. Late yesterday afternoon, the Hochul administration confirmed a new plan will be unveiled, but didn't give specifics. Governor Hochul paused congestion pricing because a daily $15 toll was too much for hardworking New Yorkers in this economic climate. On Thursday, the governor will announce the path forward to fund mass transit, unclog our streets, and improve public health by reducing air pollution, spokesman Avi Small said in a statement Wednesday. The MTA has been counting on congestion pricing to deliver a billion dollars in annual toll revenue to finance $15 billion in planned infrastructure upgrades, including on the Long Island Railroad. Last week, Governor Hochul confirmed she recently spoke with officials in President Joe Biden's administration about, quote, the need to take affirmative steps to ensure that nothing compromises the MTA. Acknowledging that the rollout of expanded paid parking earlier this year was not our finest hour, trustee Aidan Korish announced at Tuesday's Sag Harbor Village board meeting that the village is exploring a two-tiered parking pass system for residents of the village and the surrounding Sag Harbor Fire and School Districts. Stephen J. Coates reports on 27East.com that Korish explained that the village introduced paid parking at the gas ball lot and the adjoining small lot on Meadow Street to help recoup the approximately $70,000 it is paying to developer Adam Potter annually to lease the gas ball lot. But faced with numerous complaints about the system, the village of Sag Harbor is considering issuing two free parking passes for each property, residential and commercial alike, in the village. Residents of the fire district and school district, whose taxes help support vital community services in Sag Harbor, would be able to purchase two parking permits for $15 apiece, he said. That arrangement would likely cover the cost of leasing the lot, said Korish. Members from 10 volunteer fire departments in Suffolk County deployed to Orange County, New York, earlier this week to assist with the Jennings Creek wildfire, including firefighters from Eastport, Amagansett, Southampton, East Hampton, East Marion, and Orient. Our first responders are always prepared to answer the call to help wherever they are needed. I am proud of their commitment, and we thank them for their sacrifice, said Suffolk County Executive Ed Romaine. Beth Young reports in East End Beacon that Suffolk County Fire Rescue and Emergency Services says there are still ample volunteer firefighters right here to respond to emergencies close to home and is urging residents to follow fire safety guidelines as the risk of fire remains high on Long Island. More than 70% of school bus camera tickets Suffolk County issued in 2023 were given on streets that students do not cross when getting on or off the bus. Since tickets carry a minimum fine of $250, the tickets issued on streets students don't cross are worth more than $15 million to Suffolk County's program. School bus safety advocates are considering proposing changes to state law that could reduce tickets 
issued on major roads where students don't cross. Peyton Guillen reports in Newsday that New York state law requires drivers to stop for school buses even on divided highways where students don't cross to get on or off the bus. Drivers who get cited are offered a chance to plead their case in court, but many opt to pay the fine. In 2023, more than 75% of ticketed drivers in Suffolk paid their fine without contesting it. The New York State Legislature passed a law in 2019 allowing local governments to adopt school bus camera programs, giving extra teeth to the decades-old state law requiring all drivers to stop for school buses. Suffolk County launched its bus camera program in 2021, contracting with Virginia-based Bus Patrol America to install the cameras and manage the program. Suffolk remains the largest bus patrol program in the country. PSEG Long Island has again missed a deadline for migrating LIPAS computer systems from New Jersey to Long Island, drawing the ire of LIPA trustees at a hearing yesterday. Mark Harrington reports in Newsday that PSEG officials had prepared a presentation to explain the delays, but LIPA chairwoman Tracy Edwards nixed it, ordering the company to come back with more information at the next board meeting in December. PSEG operates the Long Island grid under an $80 million annual contract with the Long Island Power Authority that expires at the end of 2025. The computer migration was initiated in 2022, following PSEG's acknowledged failures in responding to the 2020 tropical storm Isaias. The project involves shifting control of dozens of applications critical to running the utility to Long Island. PSEG is scheduled to complete the computer migration just as its contract expires. Newsday in June reported LIPA ratepayers faced $5.3 million in unexpected costs from the $68 million migration project. The search for the next superintendent of the Riverhead Central School District is underway. Alec Lewis reports on RiverheadLocal.com that the Riverhead Board of Education will start circulating an advertisement for the job by early next week. The board hopes to have the next superintendent hired by mid-March, which will allow the superintendent to help fill other vacant positions within the district's central administration. The search for the next superintendent, who acts as the Riverhead Central School District's chief executive officer, is being conducted by Eastern Suffolk BOCES Chief Operating Officer David Wicks, who is a former Riverhead School Administrator. The previous Riverhead School Superintendent was paid $250,000 annually. A recent federal report highlighting the saltwater intrusion into groundwater affecting coastal areas of Nassau County is just the beginning of a comprehensive mapping of the groundwater under all of Long Island, which will include areas with sensitive aquifers on eastern Suffolk, including the North and South Forks. Beth Young in East End Beacon reports that the Long Island Groundwater Sustainability Project is being conducted by the U.S. Geological Survey and the New York State Department of Environmental Conservation. USGS hydrogeologist Frederick Stubb, who is leading the research, gave an overview of the project to the Orient Association at its October 27th meeting, Orient, at the far tip of the North Fork, relies for its drinking water on a shallow aquifer that is highly susceptible to saltwater intrusion. A portion of the tiny hamlet's private drinking water wells have also recently been found to be contaminated with the chemical PFAS, and the Orient Association has recently hired a consultant, CDM Smith, to do a study of Orient's drinking water. Its findings will be released at a public meeting in January. The water in the ground below Long Island is crucial to Long Island's ability to sustain its population of 2.8 million people. Groundwater aquifers are the only source of drinking water for all of Nassau and Suffolk counties, unlike Brooklyn and Queens, which are geographically on Long Island, but get their drinking water from New York City water supply systems fed by aquifers in upstate New York. 
This has been Long Island Local News on Long Island's only NPR station, WLIW-FM. I'm Michael Mackey.